William Boyd Hopalong Cassidy was married five times. He met Grace Boyd and three weeks later married her. He was 42, she was 23. They were married and it was a very successful marriage. He lived until 1972, died at the age of 77, and Grace, she lived until 2010, till the age of 97. Hi, I'm Rob Word. Welcome to Words Way Back, where today I'm featuring a double bill with William Boyd and his wife, Grace Bradley, in two separate movies. Hoppies? Well, of course, it's a hoppy movie with William Boyd. It's Texas Masquerade. William Boyd goes undercover, leaving his black outfit aside and disguising himself as an Eastern dude where he goes to Texas. Now, Guess where this was shot? Lone Pine? No, buckaroos, you'd be wrong if you guessed Lone Pine. And they didn't go to Texas either. <laughs> they went to Kernville, California, so you'll see Joshua trees. It's beautiful there, but it ain't Texas. Now, Grace, she's in a film called Romance on the Run. It's our second feature, and it's a beautiful comedy mystery starring Donald Woods as a detective who's out to find jewels and return them to the insurance company. Patricia Ellis works for the insurance company, and William Demarest is a police detective who's always trying to bust Donald Woods. But you'll see he's already got that slow burn and comedy timing down pat. Somebody else who has great comedy timing is Edward Brophy, who plays an assistant and valet to Donald Woods. Grace, Grace Bradley? Well, she just might be involved in the thievery of the jewels. I know you're gonna like this, and most of you have probably never even seen a Grace Bradley movie, and I thought it would be terrific and a special treat to run them back to back. So here you go. Texas Masquerade with William Boyd, and also Grace Boyd in Romance on the Run. Subscribe, comment, share, and check out our Patreon page. But right now, let's double up, double date, with Bill and Grace Boyd. Get you for this, Cassidy. I'm the state's prisoner in Albuquerque. They won't keep me jail long. Long enough to hang you. You and me will meet again, and the next time you won't be top dog. We'll leave you this, too. California, get a rope around it. Get going. What's he doing here? I don't know. I'll see what else I can find here. He's going to Glenby. Where's that? Way down in southern Texas. 
Wonder what a man like him would be going to a little place like that. No. You stay here with him, Jimmy. All right, Doctor. If he can get out of this, he can get out of jail. Well, that should hold him. <laughs> now, I'm going after Dr. Evans. You help Jimmy get this man back to bar 20, and we'll find out what this is all about. Right, Hoppy. Don't go away. Boys like to work for me. What doing? Oh, I could use riders sometimes. 
No, the lazy W ain't even likely to get paid. Ah, uh, we'll take a chance. More chances than you figure. Well, keep your eyes peeled, old timer. <laughs> <laughs> He was a kid, he blew the wings off butterflies just to see him wait. Won't be long before he gets his ears in the back. <laughs> Deal me in, Joe. Okay. Third, Service, please. What's yours? Milk. Just milk? Alcoholic indulgence, my benevolent Boniface, is the epitome of all the evils that permeate man's nature. Milk. If the customer wants milk, give him milk. All right, boss. Thank you, sir. How do you do, stranger? I'm in the pink, thank you. I'm Ace Maxson. This is my place. Oh, a lovely place, too. This drink's on me. Thank you. What are you selling? Selling? You're a drummer, ain't you? Oh, a traveling salesman? Oh, dear, no. Nothing so plebeian. Where are you from? Uh, Boston. You mean Boston? Oh, no. The O is pronounced R. Boston, the capital of culture. Well, out here, we call it Bean Town. Oh, how quaint. How quaint. <laughs> You're Elbert. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Bust that bruise. She will in a minute. You seem to be somewhat of a practical joker, Mr. Maxson. <laughs> you don't have a purpose. Oh, no, no, I apologize. I'll apologize while you dance. Oh, but I don't dance. Well, go on, start dancing, you broken arch bean town sport. Go on. <laughs> Take it easy. Poppy knows what he's doing. Let him, you'll spoil everything. How do you do, Miss Curtin? Hello. Allow me. Did you ride in to accept my offer for your ranch? Not yet. I, I'm expecting someone. I'm very late. Have you seen a stranger? He'd be wearing city clothes. Why, you good-for-nothing bully. Why don't you pick on somebody who can defend himself? Why not? And don't you dare talk back to me. This is disgrace. We didn't know who he was. Is this the way you maintain law and order? Oh, we was only fooling. Thank you, Mr. Trimble. Always glad to be of service to a young lady whom I regard so highly. This is my cousin, Mr. Colwyn. Mr. Trimble. How do you do? How do you Mr. So you're Virginia. My, how you've changed through the years. So have you. I didn't get your letter from Twin River until this morning. It's too bad you were delayed. Yes. Let's get out of here. Good day. Have you two been here all the time? Yes, sir. Standing around like bumps on a log while my cousin was being abused? Well, how do we know that dummy was your cousin? Yeah, that's right. Hold your tongues. Carlson and Rogers worked for me at the ranch. They seem to be mentally deficient. Oh, I've needed help so badly, I simply had to take any old thing that looked like a man. Get out of here. Are you all right? Oh, yes. yes. Mentally deficient. Well, aren't you? I might be a little bit, but... Huh? Just a minute. A little... Where's your luggage? I left it at the stage depot. Run over and get my cousin's bag. And you can go to the livery stable and get our bus boy and drive Mr. Cohen to the ranch. Yes, ma'am. And hurry, Carlson. I'm Rogers. You can help me with my shopping. Oh, do you mind if I stay here? That dancing, my feet, my poor arches are killing me. Well, I'll be right back. No, don't hurry. Ah, oh, Mr. Cole. You here? Oh, yes, my feet. 
views ever bother you? Why, I always watch where I step. <laughs> I should imagine you'd have to in your business. <laughs> in this country, a man must have several lions in the fire. Yes. I understand you own half of the Lazy W. Isn't that so? Mm. Where did you get your information? Why, Miss Virginia told me when I offered to take the ranch off her hands. Oh, I see. How about you and me doing a little business? Now, that depends. On what? Well, I might decide to settle here if I like the people and the country. But that land is worthless. Is that so? Hmm. Then why should you want it? Why, I, uh, I wanted to help your cousin. Ranching is no business for a girl like Virginia. Since her father's death at the hand of those night riders, she's had a difficult time. Why, an influence her decision. Yeah. And uh, if you do decide to sell, you'll find me easy to do business with. Oh, I should imagine, yeah. Goodbye. Thanks, Rogers. I'm Carl. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Oh, may I help you? Don't bother. It didn't take you long to get clubby with Trimble. Well, he seems like such a nice chap. Does he? Please get in. Aren't you going with us? No, thank you. I'll see you at the ranch. do to make her sore. You talk too long to the wrong people. What's this all about, Tommy? I'm Corwin. Yeah, well, I'm Rogers. I mean, he's Carl's. I mean, no, no, no. This masquerading has got me all confused. How's there, Miss Corwin, coming along? Oh, he's doing fine. He's gonna have an awful fight on his hands when he gets here. He's back at the bar 20 learning all about horses and guns. He'll be ready when we want him. Let's get out of here. This gentleman from Boston finds it unpleasant here. It won't be too difficult to get our hands on the lazy W. But Carwin owns half of it. Maybe spur one half the horse, the other side has to go along. For over them. Yeah. Good job for you, Sykes. Not another eviction. Martindale. Oh, Mr. Trimble, he's an honest man. He'll pay every cent he owes you. That's the trouble. But that old tumble down range ain't even worth what you write on it. Take me if I understand. Mr. Robotham, you're paid for poundage, not brains. Yeah. <laughs> Have a drink. Sure. Sure glad to see both of you. See, we hardly know you. <laughs> I don't wonder. What have you found out? You're in little. Why do you suppose Trimble wants the lazy W? Wouldn't we like to know? Got any idea who's the head of the night riders? What's the matter? Poppy, when people around here talk about night riders, it's behind closed doors. Oh. We've heard them, though. Yeah? Oh, Poppy, turns my backbone into a nice one. We want to show you something. Whoa. See over there? Yeah. That's Satan's garden. That's the right name for it. What about it? It's where the night riders of all kinds of catering draw. Oh, oh. You been in there? Me? See, I wouldn't win there for a million dollars after what I heard. No, sirree. Let's get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> that's them. What do you mean? Them night riders. Yeah, that's the noise they make. Well, that's only a coyote. That's what you think. Well, whatever it is, it certainly got you two plenty jumpy. Is this Satan's garden on the Lazy W Ranch? It takes up most half the land. Hold it on. Ooh. You were discussing my affairs with hired hands, Cousin Jimmy. I'll thank you to wait and hear them from me. 
What ails your horse? Nothing, ma'am. I just thought maybe I'd come up. Oh, don't so. blame them. It was my fault. Well, hurry and get to the ranch. Yes. We're going into that station guard in the first yeah. in the morning. We are. Rogers? Yes, ma'am? Have you seen my cousin? No, ma'am. Well, yes, ma'am. Well, make up your mind. Which is it? Mr. Corwin went riding. You had no business giving him a horse. Well, he said seeing as he was half owner of this outfit, that ought to make him half boss. He's not even half a man. That's what you think. What did you say? I just said he looked like the missing link, all dressed up like an undertaker. Which way did he go? He went to town. And you let him go alone? Oh, no, Carlson went with him, see that he wouldn't fall off his horse. Well, I'll find him. Well, Miss Virginia, that isn't the way to town. You're not used to lying, Rogers. My cousin should have rehearsed you more thoroughly. Mr. Corwin wants this patch of sand and sticker. He didn't want it. He loaned his relatives some money, then took half of the ranch's security. Well, he got stuck. And it looks that way. Here. Yeah. Well, <laughs> That's them, Holly. Them night riders. Night riders? Yeah. Have they got fur? Fur? About the boldest coyote I ever hoped to see. Well, doggone that flea scratching son of Satan. I'll fix him for scaring me. Now you're too late. Oh, no, I ain't. There's five dollars bounty in that critter's nose. Yeah? yeah? Well, if you bring back that particular coyote, I'll give you another five dollars. You will, huh? Yeah. Wait here. I'll be right back with Mr. Coyote's scout. Watch your step.
them up, boys. And keep them there. Drop your rifle. Thank you. Now, since you howl like coyotes, I should shoot you for your hides. Coyotes? Coyotes don't howl in the daytime. I don't suppose you know what I'm talking about. No, we don't. Good morning. What do you think you're doing? These two gentlemen just tried to kill me. Perhaps you know them. They work for me. They do? Jeff and Al have orders to shoot on sight any trespasser on this part of the Lazy W property. Since they didn't meet you last night, they had no way of knowing who you are. Well, I... Well, I'm awfully sorry. You can loan my cousin your horse and ride double to the ranch. Yes, ma'am. You seem to want to come off. What happened to you? I fell down. Did you get that coyote? He most got me. Them woods are full of coyotes. Too bad, Rogers, too bad. Carson. Oh, yes. Yeah. Cousin Jimmy. Yes? Come inside. You and I are going to have a definite understanding. Oh, but Virginia, don't you, uh, don't you think I should have a bath and get cleaned up first? Well, all right, but please hurry. Yes. Oh. Yes, that's, you know, those things you take in a bathtub. Or a bath. <laughs> oh. Give me some of that kerosene. Well, well, this feels a little better. That certainly was a mess. Sit down. Yes. Have you forgotten why you came here? Oh, no, I expected to take that little matter up with you in a couple of days. Right now, if you don't mind. By the way, how are things back in Boston? Fine, fine. Indeed. And how are all the family? Excellent. In fact, never better. And dear old Aunt Abigail. Splendid. Splendid. She is. Except for her rheumatism. That bothers her now and then. If Aunt Abby has rheumatism, it's in her wings. Yes. Dear Aunt Abby certainly is a bird. <laughs> An angel, I hope. She died when I was nine. She did? Somebody should tell me these things. Now then, since you're an imposter, just who are you? You know, I really believe you'd use that thing. Unless your explanation is satisfactory, I'd rather than not. Then maybe you better read this little note. I'm sure you'll recognize your cousin's handwriting. He's been wounded. Yes, in a stage holdup. Well, then, then this masquerade was his idea. Well, he thought I could learn more about condition chairs, James Corwin, than as myself. And you're Hopalong Cassidy. Oh, everyone's heard of you. Am I that notorious? That famous. <laughs> After all the things you've done for people. Oh, I, I realized you weren't my cousin right after I met you. But when so many awful things happen, your, your father killed right under your very eyes, you, you just don't know whom to trust. That's why I sent for Jim Corwin. What about these two boys that work for you, this Al and Jeff? They're the only ones that stood by me through my trouble. What, you don't think that I they... I don't know what to think. There's somebody around here willing to kill to get this land. Did Mr. Trimble impress you as a man to be trusted? Not exactly. Of course, it, it's unfair to point suspicion without a particle of real proof, but similar tragedies have happened to so many in this valley. People have been terrorized and tortured and burned out. Those, those horrible night riders. I know. How do you connect Trimble with the night riders? He always buys up the property of the victims, yet nothing ever seems to happen to him. Odd, isn't it? Mm-hmm. And he's been trying to get this place ever since your father was killed. What? How did you know? He tried to make a deal with me for the core one half. That's what I thought when I saw you talking with him. Tell me, uh, who else around here is he loan money to? There's a Mr. Martindale, a neighbor just a few miles west. Martindale. Well, he'll do to start with. By the way, are you anything around here I could use for riding clothes? I don't want to wear my own. There's some things which belong to Dad. I think he'd be very proud if Cassidy of the Bar 20 would wear them. Thank you. Here, 
John. You can't put me off my own land, Mr. Sykes. This ain't your land no longer. Sorry, John, but that's the law. Mr. Trimble said we could take our own time paying. We'll pay him next week. If you can't pay the 500 now plus the 12% interest, then start moving your stuff off in this land. But where can we go? We ain't budging. Then I'll budget. Your stuff, too. Listen, if you don't listen. Maybe that'll order you to keep your mouth shut and obey a court order. Awful sorry to have to do this, John. Oh, Mr. Sykes. Oh. Mother, mother. You act like one of the dirty night riders that raided us. Don't you, Mr. Sykes, Mr. Sykes! Don't you, Sykes! Not my land, Jake. Do what you mean, John! and both the lawn, Glenby. Yeah? Youngins here. Buried them here, too. Much of anything, but it's ours. Strange when a man needs killing, he can always find somebody to do the job. Only it wasn't Sykes that needed killing most. Just tremble. Tremble. Oh! What's the matter? Luke Sykes has been killed. Who did it? John Martindale. I'll go tell A. Okay. Okay. I kind of dig this well when they came. You have any trouble digging in this stuff? Always. Black gumbo keeps oozing into the hole. This is why Trimble wants your ranch and all the other land in the valley. You mean they smelly stuff? What's it good for? <laughs> There's a young fellow in the East that can tell you. He's on his way to being the richest man in the world on account of it. His name is Rockefeller. John D. Come into the house. I'd like to have a talk with you. Well, oh, what to do? Leave that to me. Who sights is my brother-in-law? Best man we ever had for the job, too. I don't know who will get to take his place. Why aren't you out with Ace bringing in that killer? My nerves are all shook up. The jellyfish with nerves. <laughs> Martin Day would try to gun a lifelong friend like me. I get it. You'd rather be half shot than all shot. Now you tell Virginia what happened. She'll take care of it until we get there. But my husband... Nothing will happen to him, I promise you. You're right, Hoppy. Here they come. Cut to the turnpike below the south side, your mother. Goodbye. Now do exactly as I told you. Martindale over here, we got a job to do. Get your rope over that limb. 
if I were you, Mr. Maxson. Your enthusiasm exceeds your discretion. I feel obliged to protest. Well, if it ain't, Mr. Corwin. I wouldn't have known you all dressed up in a dead man's clothes. So you recognize these clothes. Perhaps you've seen them under similar circumstances. I've heard that these things happen around here, but usually under the cover of night. If you aim to stand Glenby, Corwin, button your left. You can't mind your neighbor's business in your own toe. All the way. You do that. Oh, my friends do say I'm too impulsive. I can't believe you did it. You Westerners seem to think you're the that can handle these things. You see, we have shooting galleries in Boston. One afternoon, I won three cigars. Yeah, well, that was just a lucky shot. Oh, you're probably right. I couldn't do that again in a hundred years. My goodness, this trigger works almost too easily. You know, I really believe this thing is dangerous. Now, really, don't you think you'd better abandon this idea? I'm taking that killer into jail. I'll surrender Mr. Martindale to jail. You see, I'm his attorney. A lawyer? O'Brien, Cavett, and Corwin, attorneys at law, 19 Cross Street, Boston. Don't do that. Mr. Corwin! Would you move over while I change that ace into a ten spot? Now, don't you boys think you'd better get going? This thing makes me awfully nervous. Why, how dainty. Why, Mr. Maxson, as a dancer, you make me appear amateurish. over the repossessions, and why and how. Well, uh, I have business with him. How are you, Counselor? I uh, say what? I said Counselor. Oh, oh, I'm fine, thank you. Well, good day. Uh, oh, by the way, I understand you're representing Martindale. Yes, very interesting case. Hmm. There's great possibilities. Well, we'll be opposing legal talent. Oh, really? Yes. Yeah. So you're to be the prosecutor. Yes? How convenient that'll be for the court. Is that an innuendo? Oh, no, it isn't ethical to get personal before we meet in the field of battle. 
Now, uh, Mr. Colwyn, I'm handling a case in which I'd appreciate the opinion of a fellow barrister who's practiced in the East. Yes. Now, uh, just how would you interpret a replevin? Uh, replevin? Mm -hmm. uh, I'll look it up. Uh, don't you know? Oh, well, uh, most any good attorney could define a replevin. Well, then do so. Uh, now? Oh, why not? Yes. A replevin. Replevin. Oh, yes. How one does forget that college boy stuff. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> a replevin is where the party distrained upon has the distress returned into his own possession upon giving security to try the right of taking it in an action. Upon condition that if and when the action goes against him, he'll return the goods or property in dispute once more into the hands of the distrainer. Our firm just won a uh, replevin action in Pennsylvania, one concerning some oil land. Did you say oil? Yes, that stuff they burn in lamps. Of course, after they refine it. Yes. Then you know something about oil. Well, only what I've learned through representing a man named Rockefeller. He's one of my most esteemed clients. Yeah. Well, thank you. Goodbye. Yeah, I'll see you in court, counselor. I thought he had you. So did I for a minute. How'd you know the answer to that Reed Plevin thing, Hoppy? Yeah, how'd you know? You remember the lawsuit at the Bar 20 about two years ago? Yeah. That was all about a replevin action. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's go to the ranch. Fine. I was looking for you, Trimble. Yeah? I found just the man to take Blue Sykes' place. Nolan here. Hey, we're playing in luck. Yeah, most of it bad. Come here. What's the matter? You look shaky. I told you if you saw a million slipping through your fingers. Who's that? That's the lawyer from Boston who's making it so hot for us. He don't fool me in that outfit. That's Hopalong Cassidy, forming a bar 20 up in the territory. Well, you're mistaken. Not about the man who did this to me. Is he the fellow they call Hoppy? That's him. And I promised Hopalong Cassidy something. You get Lou Sykes' job. And you ride tonight. Come on. This claws are cut. He's alone except for the women. When we get there, nobody make a move until I give the signal, Savvy? Before daylight tomorrow, we'll wind up Mr. Cassidy's masquerade. Let's go. Rope on him has issued warrants for us. Huh? And Cassidy's been deputized to serve him. How do you know? County clerk's tongue was sold on my saloon. He tipped me off. We'll take care of Rope on him. Hey, let's ride out Satan's gun. Nolan should be there by daylight to report. You've been working all night. Oh, good morning. Well, I had to get this job finished. Now your cousin will be able to free Martin. Everything is here in black and white, and they're all certified records. Everything should be easy for Colwyn. By the way, Jimmy should be meeting him about now at the junction. I bet you'll be glad to see him. I sure will. What are these? Oh, well, those are warrants for Trimble and his men. Marshall didn't dare serve them, so he deputized me to form a posse. California's out now rounding them up. You're an odd man, Bill Cassidy. With all the things you've done for others, you, you want nothing for yourself. Oh, I don't know. I, I get something out of it. I understand, Hoppy. And I shall always remember and be grateful. How that you haven't had a wink of sleep. Well, you never quite know when those night riders are going to strike. Ah, uh, suppose you forget about those night riders. We'll be able to handle them if they do come. Not morning now. You better get some rest. <laughs> there they are. See that those shutters are closed. They are. This is empty. Look, vaults. Jeff was fooling around here when you was washing up for supper. Oh, 
if I'd only listen to you. Open up, Cassidy. Sam Nolan. Yes, it's me, Cassidy. Sam Nolan. Thought I was in jail in Albuquerque, huh? Maybe hung by now. Well, they can't keep me in jail. I got friends. Open it up. Come on, get these things out. No matter what happens, get them into your cousin's hands. That's all. Here, take these. Here it's all. Oh, Hoppy. It's only me. I won't let you. Come on, please, hurry. Get him up. Get back. I'll take care of him. Just me, see? No one else. Get out. Get those hands behind you. Shooting arm's gone bad. You did that, remember? You had it coming to you. What did I tell you the day you shot me? You said we'd probably meet again. Well, here we are. You sweating, Cassidy? Now, oh, wait a minute. Let's get the Stay gun. where you are. Get those hands behind you. Get back. Well, why don't you get it over with? I'm waiting for you to beg me not to kill you. I don't imagine that'll do much good now. I'm not so sure about that. When a man's dead, nothing hurts no more. There must be something that hurts worse than just killing. Cassidy? You and I are gonna look just like twins. And the slug in the right place is gonna do it. That arm. We missed the excitement. Shucks, there ain't nothing happened yet. The men behind all this are still unpunished. And it looks like our chances of catching them are pretty slim. They'll take a warning from what happened here and light out for the border. Mr. Cassidy! Oh, Mr. Cassidy! What is it? Will somebody give me a drink? What is it? Trimble and Ace are waiting for Nolan in the Joshua's at Satan's Garden. They almost got me. You can catch them there if you hurry. Good work, Marshal. Now we'll find out what you learned at the Bar 20. Come on. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Thank you. 
and get around back. All right, Hartley. until the engineers get here to appraise Virginia's oil holdings. That's fine. Hold on to this land. Never sell Texas short. You know what's under the ground might someday be more important to America than what's above it. Well, goodbye. Goodbye, Hoppy. And thank you. You're welcome. So long. Goodbye, Hoppy. Goodbye. So long. Goodbye. 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 Come, Carlson. I'm Roger. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
man. Young man. You ever know anything about these contractions? I'm afraid not very much. What seems to be the trouble? Well, if I knew you, it just won't go. Oh, well, I suppose it serves me right for going out without my chauffeur. Is there a garage in this neighborhood? The nearest one's about three blocks. Oh, oh. Here you are. Have them send a mechanic. Well, that's all right. I'll have them send one over. <laughs> my, what a nice young man you are. And do hurry, my son will be so worried. Yes, ma'am. Okay, Charlie, hop to it. Here's a flash. Some smart guy cuts a main burglar alarm cable in a hole at Third and Lester and pops off every bell in the district. Then when the cops are running around in circles, he blows the belt of jewelry safe and grabs a famous diamond necklace called the Zyrenus Tear. <laughs> We've got to recover that necklace, Ridgeway. I want you to put your best men on this case. Well, it's hardly my case. Of course, if I can do anything. It's your company's case to the extent of $100,000. That's the amount you'll have to pay us if we don't recover. Mr. Phelps, you were notified a month ago that your policy would not be renewed. Why, there must be some misunderstanding. My check for this year's premium was accepted, endorsed by your firm, and paid. When was this policy renewed? I think it was about a month ago when you were in Boston. Yes, I'm sure it was. I took the liberty of... You took the liberty? Why, yes. The policy had been in force a number of years, and I received a renewal check, so automatically I... That will be all, Miss Harrison. Very well, Mr. Phelps. In the event recovery of this necklace is not affected, your claims will be promptly paid. Well, of course. <clears throat> Thank you. Mr. Ridgway, may I suggest that you leave this case entirely in the hands of the police? Well, Lieutenant Eckert, I'm glad to see that you're cooperating with us in your usual efficient manner. <laughs> However, I'm reserving the right to engage my own investigator. Listen, Ridgway, you've paid Barry Drake thousands of dollars for the return of stolen property that the department could have recovered at no cost to you. Well, I admit he's been very successful. But he's just as much a crook as the crooks he does business with. And one of these days we'll prove it. trying to find you all day. I wanted to tell you... I know, I know. The Tsarina's tears have been stolen. How did you know? Maybe I was around when it happened. Was you? Or maybe I read it in the morning paper. You know who done it? I'm not quite sure, but I have a pretty good idea. Well, you're sure tough to find as a girl been trying to get you on the phone all day. A girl? Yeah, a Miss uh, Harrison, Dale Harrison. Harris. Harris. I don't know any Dale Harrison. Was she uh, good looking? Well, uh, oh, how do I know? I only talked to her on the phone. But she had a good looking voice. Yeah? All right. Get her on the phone for me. Would you let me have another nickel? Apparently, I can't trust you with money, Whitehouse. I'm afraid I'll have to make that call myself. Yes, sir. I, 
I'll take it. I'll take it. Hello. Oh, hello, Barry. Hello. I, I, I've been trying to locate you. Yes. Uh, did you read the papers about the robbery? Yeah, well, I'm in a spot. Somebody pulled a boner. Mr. Ridgway, I never talk business when I... Now, we want that necklace back and no questions asked. There's $5,000 in it for you. Did you say $10,000? What? Just a minute while I entertain your proposition. Well, 10000 is all right, but get it back. I accept. As a matter of fact, I am already working on the case. You have nothing to worry about, Mr. Ridgway. The Tsarina's tears will be on your hands before you know it. Okay. Are you a dreamer in love with love? Have you the idea you're dreaming? Hey, uh, Stella, you're supposed to be looking at me, not that singer out there. Why all the interest? Strictly professional, darling. Oh, oh she's old enough to be your mother. <laughs> Let's dream together. Mr. Cooper? No, I don't believe I've had the pleasure. How do you do, Miss... Uh... Uh, Lamont, Lily Lamont. Sit down, Lily, sit down. Thank you. I uh, enjoyed your number very much, Miss Lamont. <coughs> That's very sweet of you. Oh, Lily, the great girl. Oh, uh, by the way, I saw you flirting with that bald-headed chap out there. Remember what you promised me last time? No more two-timing. I think I'll leave you two to get acquainted. Uh, now remember, Lily, no more trifling. Hey, what is this? Why, I don't even know what he was talking about. Oh, you don't even know what he was talking about, huh? Listen, if you're running around with that Drake Charlie, guy... please. I've never been out with Drake in my life. The last time I saw him was two years ago. He was on a case I was mixed up in. Yeah? Listen, you take care of the check, and I'll see you later.
Have you looked under the wallpaper yet? <laughs> I was uh, coming to that. Come on, Charlie, I give up. Where is it? You're hardly in a position to be asking questions, are you? Technically, no. But you can't use that thing. It makes too much noise. Besides, uh, murder's a much tougher rap than safe blowing. Safe blowing? Come on now, I know you've got the necklace, and you know that you can't get more than four or five grand for it. I'm getting ten for returning it. I'll split with you, no questions asked. Very interesting. But even if I knew what you were talking about, I'm not doing business with coppers. Now listen, Charlie. I... Uh -uh. Keep that up until he's going to collect your insurance. Come on now. Where is it? Well, you seem to be running the show now. Supposing you tell me. Well, let's review the case. Famous necklace stolen. Chief suspects Lily Lamont and Charlie Cooper. Railroad tickets found on premises indicate plans for sudden flight. Train leaves Union Station at 10.40 p.m. Was somebody planning a little trip? <laughs> Sherlock, you amaze me. The case is practically solved, except for the recovery of the neck. <laughs> I uh, wonder where it could be. Your sense of the artistic surprises me, Charlie. Or was that uh, Lily's idea? Buried treasure, eh? The case is solved. Someday you're not going to be so lucky. Oh, you shouldn't go around frightening people like that, Charlie. I'm afraid I'll have to put you where you can't do any harm. Will you uh, step into my office, Mr. Cooper? Good luck. And don't miss the 1040 train. What are you doing here? I thought I fired you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Well, Ridgeway, you won't need Drake on the Phelps case. We got a lead and expect to make an arrest within the next 24 hours, but you're a little late. Barry Drake has recovered the necklace and is on his way here with it. No. Yes. How are you, Mr. Ridgeway? Uh, hello, Barry. Uh, have you got it? Did I ever let you down? Where did you find the necklace? Salvaged it. It was raised from a sunken chest, guarded by a beautiful murphy. Mm, pretty smart, aren't you? Maybe you can tell us how you always manage to find stolen property so quickly. Sure. I just stop and figure, now where would Lieutenant Eckert look for it? Then I look somewhere else. <laughs> okay, funny man. But one of these days, you'll forget the cover-up, and we're going to hang it on now, you. Now, if you don't mind, I've got to catch a train. And now, may I have the necklace? May I have my fee? Oh, oh the fee? Oh, yes, yes, to be sure. <laughs> Pretty little thing, isn't it? I'll take charge of it. Thank you. That's right. And now, if you'll excuse me, I have uh, guests waiting and all that sort of thing. You understand? Thank you, and uh, good night. Good night. <clears throat> well, that's that. Ten grand. For what? I tell you, Ridgeway, someday I'm going to have... Save it, Lieutenant. If you don't mind, I've got to catch a train. What's this? It's my resignation. Resignation, indeed. Well, you know I'm leaving for New York. Who do you expect's going to look after things? You stay right here and see that nothing happens. And don't sign any more policies. I'll get that great guy if it's the last thing I do. He's an out-and-out -out crook. I he agree with you, Lieutenant. Ten thousand dollars. Oh, Mr. Phelps. So you recovered the necklace. Of course we recovered it. Well, that is, it, it was recovered. What is this, a joke? Why, it, it, it's the Tsarina's tears, ain't it? It's a lot of paste, a rank imitation. What? Where did you get that thing? <laughs> 
Why, Barry Drake brought it. He... Yeah, Barry Drake. I told you he pulled something like this. He keeps the real thing and rings in a phony. $10,000. I've been waiting for this. Where's Ridgeway? He just left for New York. He's on his way to the station. I've got to catch him. He... he's... Wait. Evening, lady. Remember me? I, uh, can't place your face, but your manner's very familiar. Well, I'm the fellow who brought you here for a good time. And now I've got the rest of the evening to prove. A telephone call for you, Mr. Drake. Oh, uh, thank you. Just a moment. You see? I think of everything. <laughs> Hello. That copper, Eckhart, he just left, boss. He's looking to pick you up. That necklace you were doing is spurious. What are you talking about? It's a phony, and they think you've done it. What'll I do, boss? The heat's on. Wait a second, buddy. Meet me at the Union Station as soon as you can. Step on it. What now, little man? A sleeper jump this time? I'll be right back. Wait for me, will you? Oh, sure. I won't budge from the spot, except to eat and sleep. Sorry. Here I am, boss. Where are we lambing? We're not lambing. We're looking for someone. Hmm? You love the overnight limited, madam. Air conditioned throughout. No dirt, no noise. It's like being wafted on a zephyr. Never mind the sales talk. I don't want to buy the train. Very well. There she is, at the last window. Uh, excuse me, uh, but that lady who just left here, we're going to the same place. Does she know it? Not yet, but uh, she will. I have two tickets to, uh, to, uh... Cincinnati? That's right. Upper or lower? Uh, two lowers. Uh, my uh, keeper can't stand the altitude. Just a minute, lady. I've got to catch the New Yorker. I'm sorry. She just left three minutes ago. Oh. Uh, treat yourself to another murder. Hey, want to know who hid the body in the trunk? The phony French detective. Look you old meanie. Back forward. Oh, why don't... Oh, I beg your pardon. What do you want, lady? I've got to stop that man. What man? Barry Drake. Who's Barry Drake? He's a crook. He's wanted by the police. I don't know anything about that lady. Oh, I've got to stop. Well, you can't go in there without a ticket. Those two men, the one with the tuxedo, I want a ticket to the same place. Where are they going? What do you think I am, a tattletale? Oh, please, please. It's very important. He, uh, he, he's my husband. He's running away from me. Oh, oh your husband? Oh, oh, dear. Well, well that's different, your husband. Oh, the brute. He's going to Cincinnati. Mm. I'll put you in the same berth. Oh, no, no. Just the same car. <laughs> Get me out another suit, Whitey. Oh, uh, another suit? I, I, I'm sorry, sir. I haven't another suit. I just packed some shirts and some ties and, uh... You're a great help. We're liable to end up in Florida or even Alaska. What color would you like, boss? Oh, a blue or a gray or... Uh, I'll, I'll put these things in your boy. One melted cheese sandwich on toast, one double old-fashioned. I think you got that right, is it? You is, and don't fall down while you're running. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, I mean, no, ma'am. Is she alone? Yes, sir. Fine. Here's the other half of that bill I gave you. There's more where that came from. Keep me posted. Yes, sir. I'm the postman. Well, 
He's in the smoking room now. His birth is lower six. Thanks. I have many change, but wait a minute. Take this. Yeah, boss, pick one out. Where did you get those? Oh, I just borrowed them. The train is full of them. Put them back, White House. This is pretty, ain't it? Put them back. a special feature of the Overnight Limited? I beg your pardon? Oh, that's quite all right. That's quite all right. Do you want me to ring for the porter? I should say not. Two's company. Will you please get out of my berth? Your berth? This is lower nine, isn't it? <laughs> it is if you uh, stand on your head. Oh. Well, I I'm sorry. I... I don't know how it could have happened. I understand. It's the nesting urge. The old homesteading instinct. I, I come from pioneer stock myself. But it's so stupid of me, Mr... Uh, Dalton. Mr. Dalton? I, uh... Now, if you'll go and I'll get myself together... Oh, no, not at all. I'll take birth number nine. After all, <laughs> anything to please the lady. Uh, you are a lady. Hey, mister. Will you and your wife please pipe down? We want to go to sleep. The uh, neighbors are complaining. Good night, Mrs. Dalton, and uh, pleasant dreams. Good night. Oh, I, I, I'm sorry. Oh, that's perfectly all right. Don't apologize. I, I represent the Fletcher Form Fit Hosiery Corporation. Could I interest you in our latest creation? Miss America, snag-proof, run-proof, absolutely impervious to the dangers of modern age. No, thanks. I'm knitting a pair. Ah, uh, competition, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Good night. Good night. I'll wear them myself. Oh, uh, Mrs. Dalton, may I come in? No, no, not now. I understand. I uh, hear something you uh, overlooked. Me to send a telegram. Yes, ma'am. We stop here five minutes. Oh, sure. I'm going into a compartment. You follow her and find out who she's sending that telegram to. you make out? Well, I, I didn't get what was in a telegram, but it was addressed to a Charles Cooper at the Windsor Hotel, Cincinnati. Good work, Whitey.
Windsor Hotel, please. Oh, I'm so glad you got here. Where are they? Here they come. But don't arrest them now. They've got to lead us to that necklace. White House, I see a friend of yours. Here? Yeah? Over there. That man again. Windsor Hotel. I'll stick with him somehow, and you follow. Right. Yoo-hoo, here I am. Yoo-hoo, here it is. Driver, take us to the Baltimore Hotel. I don't blame you for not waiting for me. After this, I'll stay right close to you. Uh, please, Miss Houston, I, uh, I don't feel that way. Oh, well, if I'm annoying you, I'll follow her myself. It's the young lady who's come up with your search last night, isn't it? Now, uh, wait a minute. How are you at stopping bullets? Boss, how about it? They say it's just like going into a deep sleep. No, not now, Whitey. Uh, wait till bedtime. Hmm, too bad, too. She's rather pretty. Eyes gray, lovely eyes. Well, here we are. Keep the change. Windsor Hotel. Hey, hey, wait a minute. Taxi. Windsor Hotel, step on it. Oh, never mind, never mind. Get a cigar. Charlie, what happened? You weren't on the train. Did you get my wire? I was delayed. I flew in this morning. You got it? Yeah. Don't, darling. That thing's a jinx. What's the matter, kid? Something wrong? Plenty. Barry Drake followed me all the way from Chicago, went through my bag on the train. What? I finally slipped him at the station, rode around in a taxi. I, I think I've lost him. May I change your linen? Oh, all right. You know, Charlie, I think... Three oh eight. Here we are, sir. Just a moment, sir. I have a little gadget. <laughs> well, if it isn't little Miss Operator number 13, why, he isn't that a pretty sight? Looks like the hot seat. <laughs> well, come on, honey. Tell Papa what happened. That dialect is terrible. Oh, that's the trouble with them foreigners. Mm. I'm sorry, we can't understand a word you're saying. 
Oh, 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 pardon me. I'm sorry. If you think this is funny. Uh, Whitey, it looks like we missed connections. Yeah. Come on, let's go. No, you're not going to leave me here like this. Why not? That's the way we found you. If you don't untie me, I'll scream. I'll take care of that. No, wait, wait. I have valuable information. If you'll untie me, I'll let you in on it. Now, please, Miss, Miss, whatever your name is, don't start that again. Oh, but I have information. Honestly, I have. Cut me loose and I'll tell you. White House, shall we take a chance? You always have. All right. Let's have it. Well, after they tied me up, the man made a phone call. Did you get the number? Main 8451. Mm -hmm. Or was it 8514? Uh, higher up again, Whitey. No, wait. It, it, I remember it was 8541. You're sure of that? Yes. And he said he'd be right over. Get that address. Information. Uh, this is official 23. I'd like the street address at Main 8541. 201 West Third Street? Thanks. 201 West Third Street. Why, that's Mondoon's place. Come on. Well, what about her? White House, draw a bath. What? For the lady. Where are we going? You're not going anywhere. Huh? You're a cute kid, but you're a very phony reporter, and frankly, I... Uh, I don't want you around. Mr. Drake, the bath is drawn, sir. Barry! Barry, what are you doing? Saying goodbye. What? I'd rather have an end like this and treasure you as a beautiful memory. But you big brute, let me down! It's a pleasure! <laughs> I'll get even with you if it's the last thing I do. Cooper, that necklace is too hard for me. I can't handle it. I won't handle it. Listen, you. Charlie, don't. You'll only get yourself in a jam. And what do you think we're in now? Well, can't we send the necklace back or lose it or... Oh, don't you know any place we can get rid of it? Not in this town. About your only chance is Louis Andre in New Orleans. If I were you, I wouldn't lose any time getting there. Louis Andre, what? He doesn't know me. I've never done business with him. I'll give you a card of introduction to him. You'll get your passports and you can land to Havana. Uh oh. Speak of the devil. What's in there? The storeroom. Slip in there, both of you, and he's gone. Here, you better take this. Hide it on you somewhere. Good day, sir. Mr. Mondoon, isn't it? Yes. What can I do for you? You can tell me where Charlie Cooper is. Charlie Cooper? I. I don't believe I know the gentleman. He's the fellow who telephoned you a little while ago. Remember? I think you made a mistake, Mr... Mr... Uh... You've made the mistake. Drake's the name. Barry Drake. Alice and I'm getting just I a little... You, Drake, I hadn't got that necklace. I, I wouldn't touch it with asbestos gloves. That's the truth. Now, look, Mondoon. I've got enough on you to hang you, but I'm only interested in what directly concerns me. I'm giving you a chance to cooperate. Louis Andre, New Orleans. This will introduce two friends of mine who... Two friends, eh? That wouldn't be Charlie and Lily heading south for their health, would it? Let's get out of here. Are they or do I have to look for them? I've been telling you I... Quit stalling, Mandoon. I don't know. I tell you, I haven't seen Charlie. Just a minute, Drake. Remember me? Hold on, kid! 
kitty. And this ain't no pop gun. Come on, get out. Come on now, Drake. I want that necklace. It so happens the man who has it just went through the alley door. You don't mean to tell me. I believe you, Barry. Of course you do, Miss Houston. Barry, what are you trying to do? You always wanted to be close to me. Now's your chance. You'll get life for this. Take charge of that necklace now. But I haven't got it. What? It's in the suitcase. The suitcase? In the car. Uh, now we gotta chase them. you fill the tank. So busy trying to get rid of me at a gas station that you forgot to get gas. <laughs> Serves you right. Mr. Drake, if there ever was the time, this is the place and the girl. Shut up before I say yes. At this rate, we'll get to New Orleans in about two years, maybe. Ah, New Orleans. Hmm. Before you develop into a soapbox orator, suppose you get on your horse and see if you can find us some gas. And a hamburger. Look, there must be a house over there where that smoke is. Maybe they got gas. Let's go and see. And leave me alone here in this jungle? Oh, no. Hello. Hello. Hello! White House, did you ever see anything like that? Yeah, an Esquire. Uh, is there anyone here who can talk? We, uh, we saw your house from across the stream and thought you might be able to help us. Lucy, go tell your pap we got furners onto the property. Hey, pappy, we got furners. Who are you, stranger? Uh, why, uh, my name's Dalton. We ain't trapping no Daltons. Get. Uh, he means we belong to the wrong mob. No, you see, that's the first name. The name's really Dean. Dalton Dean. Yes. Kind of wet, ain't you? <laughs> yes, a little. Suppose I could come in and dry off? Oh, I reckon you might as well. Ma will take care of you. Oh, thank you. Oh, dear. What's the matter? It's my purse. I've lost it. Well, never mind. You just carried it for an ornament anyway. <clears throat> What's your trouble, stranger? Well, um, you see, we ran out of gas. Do you know where we can get some? 
The night's over yonder. How far is it? About two hoops and a holler. Mm. White House, start whooping. <laughs> Get! May I intrude? Apparently, it's inevitable. Well, I never realized that Lily had such good taste. Thank you. Think we'll be here long? Oh, about as long as Whitey can take. Why? Don't tell me you're anxious to get back to work. No. You like the glamorous life of a reporter? Oh, it's the usual run-of-the-mill stuff. Fires, murders, riots, airplane accidents. Day after day, week after week. Sounds horribly dull. Oh, it is. Sometimes you're lucky enough to run into a tall dog. And, uh, then? Oh, then it's very exciting. And dangerous? The drink! I got the gas! Would you come here a minute? Excuse me. Well, boss, I've been against it all along. Mr. Drake, I've stated repeatedly that a man has certain instincts. I've tried to imply that... Whitey, what in blazes are you talking about? Mr. Drake, boss, get a load of that. Where'd you get this? In a place when I found it, and I don't like it either. What's it mean? What's it sound like? Boss, I begged you to let me push her off the train. What for? Now we know who she is and what she's doing. Mr. Drake, I hope you're finally convinced. I hope you realize how far you've been sticking your neck out. Why the dirty, double-crossing, two-faced, baby-faced little... Go put that gas in the car. Yes, sir. What is it, Barry? Anything wrong? No, nothing's wrong. Whitey just found your purse, and also this telegram from headquarters. Barry, I can explain... Save it. Now we understand each other. Barry!
gee. Ain't it nice to be alone? Yeah. Whitey, she's liable to get hurt back there. We ought to go back. Oh, I say you're crazy. You've been trying to shake her. We're going back. Please, for my sake, don't go back to that shooting gallery. Get out, both of you. Well, Charlie, how lucky. I've been looking for you. Yes, I know. I was afraid you wouldn't find me. Charlie, it's gone. What'd you do with that suitcase? Suitcase? I haven't got any time to waste, Barry. You know the necklace was in that suitcase. What? Gentlemen, I've been trying to explain that I am an officer of the law. You're trapesing on private property. I know, but it was only after them city folks. You know, that man in the tuxedo? Tuxedo, you know, tuxedo. Oh, them, yeah. them fellas in the circus clothes? Yeah, yeah, that's oh. it. Oh. that jar of face cream. You know, the, the jar, the thing that... You can't have it. The lady gave it to me. What? Uh, may I look at that for just a minute? I'll give it right back to you. Good. Give me that. They're gone. If you're looking for them glass beads, the lady took them. You're all under arrest. And I want those jewels. So do we. Miss Harrison. Good morning, Lieutenant. Well, I got him back. And that was a great job you did. Yes, Mr. Ridgway is going to be very proud of you when he... I'll do the talking here. My apologies, Lieutenant. Now, if I may have the necklace, Miss... Oh, uh... yes, yes, the necklace. Mm. Mm. That was nice work. And you thought you could get away with returning this phony. <laughs> I repeat, Miss Harrison, that was nice work. Nice. And as for you, Drake, what have you to say for yourself? Nice work. He just said that. Wise guys, huh? When you're up there doing a the stretch with Lily Lamont and Cooper, you'll have time to think up a lot of wisecracks. Ah, Mr. Phelps. Well, Lieutenant, I received your message. Have you got the necklace? Have I got it? <laughs> have I got it? What do you call this? I call that a beautiful collection of glass. What do you mean? But that's an imitation. Where's the genuine necklace? What do you mean, an imitation? Why, why... Now, this... now, now wait. Look, Eckert. You sent for me to deliver the necklace. Now, where is it? Now, look at here, Phelps. I've gone to a lot of trouble to recover this necklace. Gentlemen, Just... gentlemen, I think you're making a great deal of fuss over nothing. That necklace is an imitation. How do you know? Because I returned the genuine necklace originally. You returned the genuine necklace. Hmm. Here's what you returned. A phony. What? Why, this is it. This is the genuine necklace. What? Why, you dumb flatfoot. Who's a flatfoot? 
You. I chase gentlemen, people all the... Gentlemen, please. I work here. Oh, sir. I get these people together, run all over the country, and you tenant. Place this amongst your souvenirs. Bah, bah. You're okay, sister. I'll be at the apartment, master. And now, Mr. Dalton, I have work to do. I get it. Oh, by the way, Mrs. Dalton, uh, what time do you go to lunch? One o'clock. Then we have an appointment at the City Hall at 1.15. Good morning, Miss Harrison. Good morning, Mr. Ridgway. Anything happened while I was away? Not a thing, Mr. Ridgway. Not a thing.